Hello friends, welcome to our channel. Did you know that rockets may also be recycled? Nowadays individuals are eager to recycle whatever they consume since they care about squandering resources. These days, not even rockets are an exception. To avoid spending the money needed to construct another rocket, they are now reused. The first reusable rocket of the orbital class is Falcon 9. Reusability enables SpaceX to relaunch the rocket's most expensive components, lowering the cost of space access. In this video, we'll discuss some little-known facts concerning reusable rockets that you should be aware of. Technology has advanced to a point where it has surpassed even the height of the sky. One such innovation that is used to monitor our planet's outer space is the rocket. We mount satellites and other spacecraft on rockets that are loaded with massive amounts of fuel. The rocket receives enough energy from the propellants to launch away from the surface of the planet. A rocket can fly in the vacuum of space because its engines are totally powered by fuel carried inside the craft. Rockets lose thrust due to the opposing pressure of the atmosphere and operate more effectively in a vacuum. Thrust is the upward force produced when a rocket consumes propellants and exhales. The rocket needs enough propellants before launch so that the force of gravity pulling the rocket down is higher than the thrust propelling the rocket upward. The rocket is pulled downward by Earth's gravity in the opposite direction. Isaac Newton, a scientist, outlined three fundamental laws that define how objects move more than 300 years ago. According to one of the rules, there is an equal and opposite reaction to every action, and this is the most crucial principle underlying how rockets operate. In order to travel around the Earth in a curved path, a rocket must accelerate to a speed of at least 17,800 miles per hour. This makes sure it won't be dragged back to the Earth. To travel to another planet, Rockets need to accelerate to almost 25,000 miles per hour to escape the gravity of the Earth. But you'll also need to determine when it is ideal to depart from Earth in order to reach that planet. History of Launching a Rocket By the 13th century, the Song Dynasty in medieval China had developed gunpowder-powered rockets. During this time, they also created the first version of MLRS. As a result of the Mongol invasions of the Middle East and Europe, in the middle of the 13th century, Chinese rocket technology was adopted by the Mongols and spread throughout the world. The word rocket is an adaptation of the Italian word rocchetta, which means bobbin or small spindle, and was given to the object because of its shape resemblance to a bobbin or spool used to hold thread from a spinning wheel. In the middle of the 16th century, Leonhard Franzberger and Konrad Haas translated the Italian phrase into German. By the early 17th century, rocket had entered the English language. In 1861, William Leitch was the first to suggest utilizing rockets to make it possible for people to travel to space. In his 1861 article, A Journey Through Space, which was eventually included in his book, God's Glory in the Heavens, Leitch first described rocket spaceflight in 1862. German science fiction film Woman in the Moon by Fritz Lang was released in 1929. It demonstrated the use of a multistage rocket and introduced the ideas of a rocket launch pad and a countdown clock for rocket launches. Germany started making the V-2 rocket in 1943. With the vertical launch of MW-18014 on June 20, 1944, the V-2 crossed the Kerman line to become the first artificial object to enter space. Rockets were also utilized aboard aircraft, either for assisting horizontal takeoff, vertical takeoff, or for powering them concurrently with the German guided missile program. In 1945, as part of Operation Paperclip, American forces seized a sizable number of German rocket scientists and they were taken to the U.S. as a result of Operation Paperclip. Scientists deployed rockets to investigate the conditions at high altitudes after World War II. With the advent of contemporary intercontinental ballistic missiles during the Cold War, rockets took on a significant military role. The rocket industry developed quickly in the 1960s. Rockets were first used for space exploration. The first crewed moon landing in 1969, utilizing tools launched by the Saturn V rocket, was the culmination of American crewed projects Project Mercury, Project Gemini, and ultimately the Apollo program. Secrets about reusable rockets Reusable rockets are vehicles that can be disassembled, recovered, and then reused to launch payloads into orbit. Although reusable spacecraft may be launched on top of an expendable launch vehicle, smaller elements like rocket engines and boosters can also be reused. Reusable launch vehicles save money on launch costs, 
by not needing to manufacture these components for every launch. However, the expensive recovery and renovation minimizes these benefits. Reusable launch vehicles may weigh more than their disposable counterparts because of added avionics and propellant. Reused components frequently have heat shields, grid fins, and other flight control surfaces since they may need to enter the environment and navigate through it. Space planes can use aviation mechanics, like gliding or lift, to help in recovery by changing their shape. To slow it down even further in the environment, parachutes or retro rockets might be required. Additionally, specific recovery equipment may be required for reusable elements, such as runways or autonomous spaceport drone ships. Some theories rely on infrastructures on the ground, like mass drivers, to accelerate the launch vehicle first. The innovators in the development of reusable rockets are SpaceX and Blue Origin. Reusable components significantly reduce launch costs, decreasing the entry barrier to space. According to NASA, during the past 20 years, the cost of commercial launches to the International Space Station has decreased by a factor of four. The equivalent figure for commercial launch costs to ADO orbit is 20, ranging from 54,000 500 US dollars per for NASA space shuttles to 2,720 US dollars per and 1,410 US dollars per for SpaceX's Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy, respectively. Although there are other contributing variables to this reduction of cost, such as modifications to the design, development, and manufacturing processes, the use of reusable rather than disposable hardware is responsible for a sizable portion of the reduction. Thanks to the reusable rockets, Satellite launches will be less expensive, and mega constellations of satellites for communication and Earth observation will grow. The landing engines and heat shielding may need to be improved for the remaining parts to be successfully reused. However, the majority of the Falcon 9 rocket's components, according to SpaceX, will last 100 flights, although heat shielding and a few other components need to be changed after 10 launches. Blue Origin's new Glenn, meanwhile, has a 25-cycle design. Given the success of SpaceX's Falcon 9 and Blue Origin's New Shepard, the notion of reuse has already been established. So we can anticipate this development to continue, with long-range and heavy-lift rockets having a significant influence in the coming decade. By February 2023, fully reusable launch vehicles should be available. SpaceX has been working on the SpaceX Starship since 2016 and hopes to conduct the first test flight of a portion of the system's capabilities as early as 2023. By 2021, Relativity Space plans to start working on the Terran R, with the goal of conducting the first orbital launch test by 2024. Blue Origin started working on Project Jarvis development at the beginning of 2021, although they have not yet set a date for testing. A rocket that is intended to be reusable is also being developed by Stoke Space. Thus, the era of reusable rockets can already be said to have begun. Costs will undoubtedly go down, and interest in space exploration will increase due to the invention of reusable rockets. Please let us know your opinion in the comment section. Give a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Stay with us for more fascination videos. Thank you for watching.